In the summer of 1314, on the rolling plains near Bannockburn, Robert the Bruce faced off against the formidable English army led by King Edward II. The ensuing battle would become a defining moment in Scotland's quest for independence, showcasing the determination and resilience of the Scottish people. But this epic confrontation was more than a fight for sovereignty. It was a turning point that influenced the movement and mingling of peoples across the land. How did the triumphs and trials of Bannockburn shape the genetic mosaic of modern Scotland? Join us as we journey through time to uncover the ancestral threads woven into Scotland's rich genetic heritage, tracing how historic events like this legendary battle have left an enduring imprint on the DNA of its people. The genetic origins of Scotland are a complex tapestry woven over thousands of years, marked by waves of migration, invasion, and cultural transformation. From the earliest hunter-gatherers who ventured into the post-glacial landscapes to the diverse modern population, Scotland's genetic landscape reflects a rich history of interactions among various peoples. This comprehensive video delves into the intricate details of Scotland's genetic origins. Evidence of human presence in Scotland dates back to the Upper Paleolithic period, around 12,000 years ago, following the retreat of the last Ice Age glaciers. As the ice receded, newly accessible lands attracted hunter-gatherer groups migrating from continental Europe. One notable site from this period is Hoburn Farm in South Lanarkshire, where in 2009 archaeologists discovered flint tools resembling those associated with the Hamburgian culture of northern Germany and southern Scandinavia. This suggests a possible migration route across the Doggerland land bridge that once connected Britain to the European mainland. Archaeologists have emphasised the significance of such findings in understanding the initial human settlement of Scotland. During the Mesolithic era, from around 10,000 to 4,000 BC, Scotland saw the establishment of more permanent hunter-gatherer communities. The Cramon site near Edinburgh, where a Mesolithic camp was discovered in 1995, provides evidence of seasonal settlements. Excavations unearthed stone tools and waste materials indicating sustained occupation. Additional shell middens on the Oronsay Islands have been studied extensively, containing vast quantities of shellfish remains that suggest a reliance on coastal resources and a sophisticated understanding of marine environments. These findings indicate that Mesolithic peoples had adapted well to Scotland's diverse environments, utilising both coastal and inland resources. The transition to the Neolithic period around 4000 BC marked a significant shift in Scotland's genetic and cultural landscape. The introduction of farming, pottery, and megalithic construction is attributed to migrants from continental Europe. Genetic studies have shown that these Neolithic farmers brought new genetic lineages. Ancient DNA analyses from skeletal remains at sites like Balbridie in Aberdeenshire have revealed haplogroups associated with early European farmers. Researchers have highlighted the importance of these findings in understanding the demographic changes during this period. The construction of monumental structures such as Scarabre and Maisho in Orkney further indicates the sophistication of Neolithic societies in Scotland. These sites showcase advanced architectural techniques and social organisation, reflecting a settled lifestyle centred around agriculture. The arrival of the Beaker culture around 2500 BC introduced further genetic and cultural changes. The Beaker people are associated with distinctive pottery styles, metallurgy and new burial practices. Genetic studies, including those led by researchers at prominent institutions, have demonstrated that the Beaker people brought significant amounts of steppe ancestry into Britain. Excavations at sites like Kilmartin Glen in Argyll have unearthed Beaker burials with accompanying grave goods, providing material culture evidence of their presence. The Achabanich Beaker burial in Caithness, where the remains of a young woman were found with rich grave goods, has been analysed to offer insights into the health, diet and origins of Beaker individuals in Scotland. These studies suggest that the Beaker migration was not just a cultural phenomenon, but also involved the movement of people who significantly altered the genetic landscape. The Iron Age, beginning around 800 BC, saw the emergence of Celtic languages and cultural practices in Scotland. The origins of the Celtic influence are complex and debated among scholars. Some propose a migration of Celtic-speaking peoples, while others suggest a diffusion of culture and language through trade and interaction. Archaeological sites like Traprain Law in East Lothian have revealed artefacts indicative of continental connections, including luxury items from the Roman Empire. Excavations have uncovered a vast hoard of silver, shedding light on the complex trade networks of the time. These findings indicate that Iron Age Scotland was not isolated but engaged in extensive interactions with other parts of Europe. 
The Picts, a group known from Roman records, played a significant role in Scotland's early medieval history. Inhabiting the eastern and northern parts of Scotland, the Picts are renowned for their symbol stones and fortifications. Sites such as Burghead Fort in Moray have been extensively studied, uncovering evidence of large-scale fortifications and longhouses that suggest a high level of social organisation. Genetic studies are beginning to shed light on Pictish ancestry. For example, studies analysing ancient DNA from Pictish burials have revealed genetic continuity with earlier Iron Age populations, indicating that the Picts were likely descendants of indigenous groups rather than newcomers. This challenges earlier theories that the Picts were a mysterious people of unknown origin, instead suggesting a continuity of population with evolving cultural expressions. The Gaels, originating from Ireland, significantly influenced Scotland from around the 5th century onward. The Kingdom of Dalriata in Western Scotland served as a bridge between Ireland and Scotland, facilitating the spread of Gaelic culture and language. The founding of Iona Abbey by St Columba in 563 AD established a centre for Christian learning and missionary activity. Archaeological work on Iona has uncovered early monastic structures and artefacts, indicating the site's importance in the religious and cultural transformation of the region. Genetic affinities between populations in Western Scotland and Ireland have been confirmed through studies analysing mitochondrial DNA and Y-chromosome haplogroups, particularly those associated with Gaelic lineages. These genetic links underscore the close connections between the two regions during this period. The Norse Viking incursions, starting in the late 8th century, had a profound impact on Scotland, especially in the Northern and Western Isles. The settlement of Vikings in areas like Orkney, Shetland and the Hebrides introduced Scandinavian culture and genetics. Excavations at sites such as Jarlshof in Shetland have revealed Norse longhouses and artefacts, providing tangible evidence of Norse settlement and way of life. Genetic research, including studies by scientists specialising in population genetics, has demonstrated a significant Norse contribution to the genetic makeup of populations in these regions. Y chromosome haplogroups commonly found in Scandinavia, such as R1A and I1, are prevalent in the male lineages of these island communities. This genetic legacy is also reflected in place names, language remnants, and cultural traditions that persist to this day. The arrival of the Normans in the 12th century introduced new elements to Scottish society. While the Norman impact was more cultural and political, there were genetic influences as well. King David I invited Norman knights and settlers to Scotland, granting them lands and titles. The establishment of feudalism and the construction of Norman-style castles and abbeys reflect this period. This period also saw the integration of Norman administrative practices and legal systems, contributing to the shaping of medieval Scottish society. The influence of Anglo-Saxons, particularly in the southeastern regions of Scotland, also contributed to the genetic landscape. Following the collapse of Roman Britain, Anglo-Saxon migrations brought new cultural and genetic elements. Sites like the early medieval cemetery at Hallow Hill in Fife have provided skeletal remains analysed by osteoarchaeologists. Genetic markers associated with Anglo-Saxon ancestry have been identified in these remains, indicating some level of migration and integration. This influence is also evident in linguistic shifts and the adoption of certain material culture elements. Researchers at the University of Oxford have been instrumental in mapping genetic diversity. The findings, published in the journal Nature in 2015, revealed distinct genetic clusters within Scotland, correlating with historical populations and migrations. For example, the genetic signatures of the Northern Isles reflect strong Norse influence, while the Western regions show affinities with Irish populations due to Gaelic connections. The study also found genetic distinctions between the Highlands and Lowlands, suggesting historical patterns of limited gene flow between these regions. Another significant study is the genetic analysis of ancient remains from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age, as published in Nature in 2018. Researchers like Dr Lara Cassidy and Professor Dan Bradley from Trinity College Dublin analysed genomes from ancient individuals in Britain and Ireland, including Scotland. Their work demonstrated the complex genetic shifts that occurred with the arrival of Neolithic farmers, and later, the Beaker people, supporting the theory of large-scale migrations, replacing much of the earlier hunter-gatherer gene pool. This research highlights the dynamic nature of population changes in prehistoric times. The use of advanced techniques like whole genome sequencing and isotope analysis has allowed scientists to reconstruct not only genetic relationships, but also migration patterns and lifestyles. Isotope analysis of teeth and bones can reveal information about diet and mobility 
Studies conducted by researchers like Dr. Janet Montgomery on individuals from Bronze Age burial sites have shown variations in diet and origins, suggesting diverse backgrounds even within single communities. Such findings indicate that ancient societies in Scotland were more cosmopolitan than previously thought, with individuals moving over considerable distances. An interesting aspect of Scotland's genetic history is the relative genetic isolation of certain communities, such as those on remote islands. The population of St Kilda, for example, remained genetically distinct due to limited contact with the mainland until the 20th century. Genetic studies on these isolated populations provide insights into genetic drift and the effects of small population sizes on genetic diversity. These studies are valuable for understanding how isolation can shape genetic makeup over time. Moreover, Scotland's genetic landscape has been shaped not only by ancient migrations, but also by more recent events. The highland clearances of the 18th and 19th centuries led to significant emigration, particularly to North America and Australasia. This had a profound impact on the genetic diversity of certain regions and contributed to the Scottish diaspora worldwide. Modern genetic studies have traced Scottish ancestry in populations abroad, linking genetic lineages across continents. This global spread of Scottish genes reflects historical patterns of migration driven by economic, social and political factors. It is important to note that while genetics provides valuable insights, it is only one aspect of understanding Scotland's origins. Archaeology, linguistics and historical records all contribute to a fuller picture. For example, the study of place names has revealed layers of linguistic influence, from Pictish and Gaelic to Norse and Scots, reflecting the complex history of settlement and cultural exchange. Linguistic studies have traced the evolution of the Scottish Gaelic language and its divergence from Irish Gaelic, providing insights into historical connections and separations. In conclusion, the genetic origins of Scotland are the result of multiple waves of migration and interaction over thousands of years. From the initial hunter-gatherers who ventured into a post-glacial landscape to the Neolithic farmers who introduced agriculture. From the Beaker people who brought new technologies and genetic lineages to the Picts, Gaels, Vikings, Normans and Anglo-Saxons who shaped various aspects of Scottish society, each group has left an imprint on the genetic fabric of the nation. The interplay of indigenous development and external influences has created a diverse and rich genetic heritage that reflects Scotland's position at the crossroads of different cultures and peoples. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.